My subject today is the place of energy and the place of India in the world context of energy. But when you look at what has happened in uh, the past year in the world of energy, it's been an earthquake. Many countries, not fast developing countries, but many countries who are taking energy for granted, realize that not only energy price could be choking the economy on their purchasing power, but that in some cases, energy could be not available, like in Europe, missing suddenly the Russian gas. So let's be simple. We face a huge challenge everywhere in the world, and it's a global challenge, which is climate change. 80% of climate change reason is due to carbon emission. And 80% of carbon emissions are coming from energy, the way we consume energy, on the way we produce energy. And at the same time, we all have the moral duty to serve one priority, which is to provide energy to everybody in the world. And as we speak today, one billion people don't have access at all to energy, and two billion people don't have access to reliable energy. We consider that energy is a fundamental human right, because energy is your passport to a decent life. But we also know that we are on the wrong trajectory. We are on the trajectory of three to four degrees. And at the same time, we need to provide the energy to many more people in the world. We also need to change completely the energy model in the already equipped part of the world to curb the emissions and actually cut the emission by a factor of two or three. Then comes this huge energy crisis, which makes everybody realize in the world that the first priority with energy is security, have access to energy, on affordability, because in some cases, energy prices have doubled or tripled. And, and companies like ours want to be less vulnerable or must be less vulnerable to the uh, equation of energy. So if you want to be optimistic, it's probably the first time in the past 20 years that the mid-term ambition to be carbon neutral, to be net zero, is actually is becoming economically profitable. And, and whatever I regret what's happening in the field of energy crisis, it's the first time that every company can now invest in green, and that investment in green will be profitable in most of the countries of the world. On energy is also a social issue. We need to include everybody. For the reason I was saying uh, before, climate disorders impact first the poor, the farmers, therefore the food equation that was uh, mentioned by Noriel Rubini. And it's also the first source of pollution in cities where most of the people work. So now let's look at India. I would say that India, as was said several times in this conference, is probably becoming the central country of the energy equation because of its very populous, uh, very numerous population, because of its fast economic development. We estimate, we just did a study and we estimate that the energy consumption of India could double, even triple in the next coming 25 years. Uh, India has realized that there is a major stake here on the objective for 2030, 50% of new energy in renewable on reducing the energy intensity by 45% are going exactly in the right direction. But let's look at the rest of the world. To fight climate change, to change the energy model, you see the U.S. with the IRA as one example, or you see Europe with the Green Deal investing hundreds of billions of dollars or euros to reduce the energy system to have an energy system which is sustainable. The chance of India, which is going to double or triple its energy infrastructure in the next coming 25 years, is to do it right in the first in the first go, in the first investment, so that we don't have, and you don't have to redo what is been to be redone in Europe on the US as we speak. So the transition, to be simple, has to be built across very simple uh, uh, um, uh, facts. 
The first point, when we speak about energy, normally people speak about supply. They speak about renewables, they speak about nuclear, they speak about oil and gas, but real energy transitions normally happen through the transition of demand. Take an example, cars will become electric not because there is more electricity, there is actually not much more electricity, they will become electric because car manufacturer, one car manufacturer, has made the first car, electric car, which is affordable, performing, and unsustainable. And this applies to everything where we live and where we work. Homes, buildings, cities, plants that we operate, and mobility. So the first priority is really to address the demand. Build in everything we do, structures, buildings, cities, which are all digital, and as electrical as possible. When we look at the perspective of India, while the energy consumption could double in the next coming 25 years, electricity consumption will be multiplied by six or more. That means everything around us will be far more electric. 75% of the electricity growth in those 25 years will be powered by renewable, actually 50% by solar, and actually 20 to 25% of that power generation could be decentralized at the bottom of building, on the roof of homes, so the production could be very close uh, to consumption. The second part of this evolution will be the use of hydrogen. And, and, uh, we spoke just before about the uh, mission hydrogen, but hydrogen will address very specific part of the energy development hard to abate, long haul transportation, storage, mass storage, hydrogen has a role to play in this equation. On the third part of the equation is to address absorption of carbon which is already emitted. So CCUS, nature-based solution, direct air ca capture are solutions which are today explored and will be developed in India. The great thing here is that in the past, energy was mostly the topic of large energy companies. So the topic of very few companies. As we go forward, and as the first priority is the transition of the demand of buildings, of plants, of cities, of IT networks, the energy efficiency or energy decarbonization becomes the problem or the challenge of all on the objective of all. So for all of our companies, there is a no regret move, which is first to digitize everything, makes everything smart, smart homes, smart buildings, smart cities, because this is a way to drive efficiency. The second priority is to electrify all parts of the processes which can be uh, electrified, because it's the only way to decarbonize. And the third move is to generate or buy as much as possible of green energies, and a large part of that will be done um, inside or very close to the point of consumption. So when we look at the future, and when I look at the G20 uh, presidency with a motto of one earth, one family, one future, we should all realize that energy is a common good on the emissions of carbon generated by energy are a global challenge for all of our countries. But as I just said before, India has a unique opportunity because it's building a large part of the infrastructure now to build it right the first time it builds it, which is not the luxury of other regions and countries which have to redo completely their energy system. So I'm very confident from everything we do here, and we have 35,000 people in the country, and we collaborate with many, uh, many companies, that India is now very conscious of this opportunity, and I look forward to all the opportunities to innovate together and build an energy world in India that will be far more sustainable and far more electrical. Thank you.